Hello everyone, my name is Lydia and welcome. Today we're going to be painting Old Barn in the Mountains. I'll go over all the materials that you need to do the painting as well as list those materials down in the description box below this video. And I'd like to take a moment to thank all of you that have subscribed to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. So grab your paints, your brushes, something to stay hydrated, and I'll meet you back at the easel. Today we're going to be painting on a 16 by 20 inch stretched and primed canvas. I'm using acrylic paints today and the colors on my palette are alizarin crimson, cadmium orange medium, cadmium yellow medium, hooker's green, ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, burnt umber, and I have three little areas of titanium white. The brushes I'm going to be using or a one inch flat brush, a half inch flat brush, a quarter inch flat brush, and a small round brush. We're only gonna be using the one inch flat brush to get the background on. So after we're done with getting the background on, we won't be using this brush anymore. You're gonna to wanna to have a jar of water for rinsing your brushes a paper towel or an old cloth for drying your brushes, a Mr. Bottle to keep your paints wet while you're working. You're gonna to wanna to have something to sketch with. I'm gonna be using a piece of kid's chalk. You can use charcoal, um, you can use a soft pencil, you can even use a number two pencil, get your drawing on and then erase it so the lines are light. However you want to get your drawing up there is up to you. There will not be a whole lot of drawing with this painting. So let's get started. So let's talk about our drawing. Now I did go ahead and put a little light sketch up here so that I have some guidelines. The great thing about this painting is you can switch it around in any way that you want. So what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start to draw in our distant mountains first. So if you go to the halfway point, I'm gonna go up maybe about an inch from there and I'm going to put just a little mark. And over here, I'm gonna have the mountains come up and then come down over here about the same. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but what you're going to do is you're just going to do a little outline of a nice mountain top, and it's just going to come down and fade away over to this side. And then our second row of mountains, we're just going to come down to about the halfway point. And we'll put a little mark there and we'll come over here and we'll do the same thing. And we're going to bring, another little set of mountains, maybe along here. And you can always adjust this as you go. So maybe something that's like this. So just two little rows of mountains. You may even want to make this one maybe come up a little higher so it just comes over that one. You may not. I may even make this one come up just a little bit more back here. So you can certainly adjust as you go. So we're gonna have a little hill that starts just below our second mountain range, the one that's closest to us, and it's gonna come down. And we're gonna stop it maybe about, so if you're, this is the halfway point, so we're gonna stop our path maybe over about another inch or two over. And I'm just gonna draw a nice little diagonal line, so that just indicates the very base of our, our hill. And then over on this side, I'm going to come down about two inches from where this mountain range is. And I'm just going to draw, I'm going to stop maybe about an inch where this little area is here over and just draw my little diagonal hill area down to, I'm going to bring it in maybe about an inch or two inches from here. So this is going to be a little pathway. This is our two mountain ranges, this is our sky, and we're gonna have a little something sitting in here. Okay, so we're gonna be starting with our one inch flat brush, and I am going to dip it in my water. 
And I want my sky to be a nice blended sky today. So I'm gonna take this water and I'm just gonna go ahead with this brush and just get my canvas wet up in the sky area so that my paint will flow off of my brush nice and easy. And if you want, you can always just wet the back of your canvas um, as well and that'll help keep things damp while you're working. But I just wanna get some water there. So I'm gonna start with a nice blue sky across the top and have it fade down lighter as I go. So I'm going to come down to my titanium white and I'm going to go ahead and get quite a bit of that titanium white into my bristles. And then I'm going to come over and get a little hint of my blue. So I don't want a ton of blue. So I've got a little dollop of blue on the corner of the brush and I'm just going to start to bring it across and then start to blend it on my canvas. Just by making those X strokes, you certainly could um, do circles if you want. I really like to do the long X strokes to get things blended in. I don't want too much detail in my sky today. I just want it to be a nice, soft, distant sky. This, you, if you feel as though you want a few clouds, you certainly can put some clouds in your sky. I'm gonna go ahead and get more white, get those into the bristles on my brush, and I'll come down and get just a little bit more blue. I don't want as much blue this time, so I'm gonna start just right here where I left off. And I'm gonna work first across get some of that blue out of my brush and then come down. And if you go into your drawing, that's fine. And if you want a little sunshine color, you can add a little yellow. If you want maybe a little orange in there, you can do that. I just want my sky to be nice and simple today. So I'm gonna go back across. I don't want it too dark. I'm gonna pick up just a hint more of my blue Come right in here and just work that in. This side, I'm working it up a little bit on each side. Let me get the little top area just a little darker. There you go. And get a little bit more of my titanium white. So I'm pressing my bristles into my white and coming down. I'm just blending that down. And that's really all I want to do with the sky today. I don't want anything that's too intense back here. Our focus is going to be more to the front of the painting today. So I'm going to clean this brush out and we'll come back and we'll start to work on our mountains. So now we're going to be using our half inch flat brush and I'm going to get this brush wet in my jar, and wipe off any excess water. I want my distant mountains to be a soft bluish purple. So what I'm going to do, make sure I get most of that water off, is I'm not gonna do, actually use my dioxazine purple yet. I'm going to use a mixed color of the blue and the alizarin crimson. So I'm gonna take some of my ultramarine blue and I'm gonna bring it over to this area where I was picking up some of my titanium white and then I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna get a little of my alizarin crimson and I'm just gonna add that in. And I'm gonna to start to do this a little bit at the time. I want this to be rather soft. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white to it. And pressing my brush in. So it's a really soft bluish purple color. And I'm gonna come in and start to put my first layer of mountains in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to start to put the paint on my brush at the top and then maybe come back in and turn my brush and smooth it out so it looks like I have some bumps but not just square strokes. And 
and then I'm going to soften it down until I reach where I think my next layer of mountains are going to be, just to have it nice and soft. And so when you're doing that, you can decide if you want to. I like to have things a little off center for interest. So I want this little bit of a mountain top to be a little off center. Right now it's just going to look like a, a bunch of brush strokes, but we're going to go back in and we're actually going to use a brush today to get in some of those highlights on the mountain to make it look like a mountain. And once I have that layer of mountains in, I'm going to go ahead and I want to darken this a little bit. So in order to get this a little darker, I certainly could add a bit more blue and a bit more of the alizarin. So I'm going to do a little bit more blue. I'll grab a touch more. Don't want too much alizarin crimson. But I'm also going to add a little bit of this orange. So I'm just going to come over and I'm going to pick up my orange. Now I added orange today just to make things easier. You certainly could mix up alizarin crimson and the cadmium yellow and get an orange and it'll get pretty close to this orange. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of orange, mix that in. Now that got a little too orange. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna add some white. I'm gonna come back and get a bit more of the blue. There we go, start to like that a little better. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna press my brush in just to get all the paint off my brush. And the good thing to do is to test it. So let's put it up here and see what it looks like. And that's good. So you want this layer to be a little darker than this layer. So I'm gonna mix just a tad bit more white into it. And then I'm gonna go with that. So I'm gonna bring this up just a little higher here and then Mark it down all the way across. I'm going to go across first, just like I did with the sky. And if you find that your paint is not leaving your brush the way you like it, always get you a little drip of water, put it in your paint, or keep it on your brush. Bring that up just a little bit over here. turning my brush in all little directions so I can get a little bit of different shapes in my in the very edges of the mountain and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up I'm not going to change my brush I'm just going to come over here and pull down a little bit of this titanium white and press the color off my brush and I'm going to come down and just soften right around the bottom edges on each side over here just to make it look like it's a bit hazy back here we will have stuff in the foreground, so your eye may not see too much of it, but you'll know it's there and, and the haze is back there. And then so I'm gonna start to work that all the way down. Get a little more water. And I'm just gonna kind of work a little bit of that hazing is back all the way into here. Okay, so now once we've got our mountain and the little haze base done, I want to create a little bit more of a little bit of a field back here, something that's a little bit more greenish purple. 
So I'm gonna keep my purple mix and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my yellow. So I'm gonna come here and get some of the Academy Yellow and I'm only getting a little bit at the time. And I'm gonna start to work this in. Just working at that in that same area, but at the base, I'm gonna pick up a little more blue to get it a little bit more of a green color. I want this to be still soft, a nice soft green area back here. So I'm just gonna lay that in back here and I'm gonna do it in such a way that I'm turning my brush in all little directions back here, maybe creating somewhat of a nice soft tree line. And this, again, this is gonna be in our very, very far background. So it's there and soft. I'm gonna add just a little bit more white to that. There we go. And I'm just working on the, mostly the edge of my brush, not really pressing too hard here on this one. There we go. And then I'm just gonna bring the rest of it down and soften it forward into the foreground. All right, so we know there's some green stuff going on back there, but we're not really going to have a lot of um, our focus won't rest back there as much as it will in the foreground. All right, and this is just our first layer. I'm just gonna keep, I have my little area that looks like maybe a little tree line, but then I've got my little field area back there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to add my two hills in the foreground. So I want these hills, as we come forward, everything in the background is cooler and everything as we start to move forward starts to get a little bit more warm. So in order to do that, we're gonna take the same area. So I haven't changed my area. I haven't changed where I'm working with my paint. I'm just continuing to use these same colors. I'm going to pull in a little more white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a green with my blue and my yellow. But now I can start to work a little bit more by adding a little bit of my hooker's green and just start to darken it a little. Now it's still kind of bright, so I wanna make it a little more earthy. So I'm gonna take, you can either do red, which is opposite of green on the color wheel. So we can do that. Just gonna take a little red and mix it in there. Or you can add a little bit of your umber, your burnt umber, and get it to be a little bit more on that. And this is just the base coat. And I'm gonna bring it up into this little purple area and just mix that all together. If you want to even add a little purple, you can. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to add a little bit more umber and a little bit more red just to kind of get it. I want to get it a little darker. Here we go. I'm liking that better. So I'm going to make strokes that are just all sorts of random strokes at the very top of my hill. I'm going to keep the edges. I don't want to draw a straight line like this and follow the hill because that's going to look very unnatural. So I do want to create some areas of highs and lows with my heel. And I'm gonna skip this little area right here and come over to this side. So we're just kind of staying in that same range across the canvas. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more purple and burnt umber together. Bring in some white. So it's a really purpley, earthy purple color. And then I'm gonna get some of my hooker's green only. 
So now it's more of a deeper green and I'm just gonna start to work that in. And I can still work it back a little bit. And remember, this is just our first layer. This is just to get a base coat on. And, I'll, and I like going ahead and doing all sorts of different strokes because you can look for those little places of serendipity, those little places that appear, um, darks and lights mixed together. And I'm gonna work across the canvas and do the same thing over here. Now my paint, you can see, if you're watching, you can see where there's a lot of the canvas showing through, so I'm running out of paint and I'm running, it feels very dry. The paint's not coming off the brush freely. So I just added more water, went in and picked up some more paint. back in. I'm going to grab a little more of my green, a little more purple, burnt umber. And I'm going to add a little bit of my yellow into that just to darken it even more because the opposite of purple is yellow. And I'm going to come in and just work that down into this more front area. And the best thing to do is allow yourself to look at it and keep moving along because what happens is you start to feel like this is looking not good, but we're just blocking in colors. Nothing looks solid, nothing, it just looks like blocks of color. And that's a great way to start because you have, then you have a roadmap of what you're doing. So as I work to come down into this corner here, I do want it to be quite dark. So I'm going to do my burnt umber and my purple together for sure. Get quite a bit of yellow pulled into that. Grab some of my green. I'm just gonna keep working down into this area. Want a little bit more green to that. Don't wanna lose the green. Pull in some white, a little more yellow, a little more green, a little more purple, and a little more of my front cover. And I may have a few little light areas that I'm hitting as I'm moving along here in the center. Now, I have a lot of dark color in my brush and I want this to be a little lighter, so I'm gonna get most of this paint out of my brush. Now, I'm using the same brush, but I have the paint out of my brush and I'm gonna come and pull over some white into a nice area over to the side here. I'm gonna get a touch of purple. And a touch of my orange. A little bit more purple. I'm moving my brush so that it is parallel to the top and bottom of the painting. So it's, I'm just, I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to cover the canvas right now. I am not trying to create any sort of, um, design or any sort of specific stroke. I'm just trying to cover in the what's going to be my little pathway here. 
And this is just going to be an old dirt path. As I move forward, and I'm going to make it a little bigger than you think, so I'm going to make it a little wider. We're going to be going over that with some of our grasses and such. And I can even bring it into these little bigger spots down here. And I'm going to add a little bit more burnt umber to this as we move closer. And just have it a little darker as we come in closer to the viewer. So we have our canvas completely covered now. So we're going to come, we're going to clean this brush out and we'll come back with a quarter inch flat brush and we'll start to fill in the mountains and make them look more like mountains. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start putting in the highlights for our mountains and we're using our quarter inch flat brush to do that. Um, so what I like to do when I, when I'm painting is take a moment just to look and see where those little things happen that I could work with. So this looks like a peak back here to me. Um, there's, there's a couple of them that maybe peaks. And of course we have the big peak. And then over here, like there's a little space here I might can work with. But as you're working through, just notice those little things in your painting that may help you. So this um, brush is going to be mostly dry. I'm gonna get it a little wet and then I'm gonna wipe most of the water out of it. The, the paint, you want it to be fluid. So if you wanna add a drop or two of your paint, you can do that. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pull out some of my titanium white and on the, on the furthest mountains away, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow and I'm going to go really easy on this yellow because it can get kind of wild and crazy. So I want a very light, light yellow color, just a little. So it's good just to add just a little bit of the pigment that's colored. So in this case, the cadmium yellow, a little bit at the time. There we go. And then you can put it up there and see how that looks. So with the mountains, it's like doing clouds. You don't want too much paint on your brush. So you can even get some up there and wipe it off if you feel like you have too much. And I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna put that first little stroke from the top. And you can see it's really a nice bright yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit more white to that because I don't want it too, too bright back there. So let's see how that looks. And that's what I mean. You can just take it and put it down and test it out. I like that a little better. All right, so then what you're going to do, and I actually like to work with my fingers here, so I like to come in and maybe soften down at the base of it um, as I put it up there, but you can certainly go along and you're gonna be turning your brush in all sorts of directions. So when I first put it on, it's pretty flat. And then as I come down, I can turn the brush and make those little areas of flat top rock and then as I come down, I can do a little bit more of turning the brush back on its flat. And you can always go back in and mix up a little bit of your mountain color if you don't like what has happened. So I'm coming along the edge and I'm pulling that in with the flat of my brush and then I'm just gonna turn. You can even wiggle a little bit, maybe get a few bumps in there. And here's where I feel like there's a couple of peaks so I'm going to get that and I'm going to smooth right at the base of that peak out. And always take a moment to step back away from your painting a little bit and see what you got going on as you're working as well. Get a little bit more water in my paint, wipe some of the paint off my brush, and just come back in. And I'm going to work with this little area a little bit more. And then just do a little wiggle down, maybe a little wiggle down there. This to me is very similar to doing clouds because it's there's a little bit of um mystery, a little serendipity to it as you're working. I'm gonna make that a little bit connected there and then just wiggle on down. So every once in a while you want to take a step back and see what it looks like to you. And then come across. 
across here. Let me hook that down and take my finger and blend that. And get a little bit more white at the top here on this one. There we go. Don't forget that each time you put a little bit of paint on, to go ahead and do a little blending underneath so that you can blend it down a little bit. Now, as we come to this next set of mountains, you can look at your back mountain and if there's something there that maybe in this area, you got a little bit too much of the yellow going across and you don't like that little yellow highlight color on the mountain above, you can certainly adjust it. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add just a drop of my orange to this color and mix it. And I don't want it too, too powerful back there. Again, everything in the background is gonna be very soft today. So I'm going to mix that up. I'm going to get some of that paint off my brush and I'm going to do a little test swatch. There's my little test piece. There we go. And I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of blend that down. And I'm going to keep moving, doing the same thing with this mountain, but it's a little bit more orange. So it has the, the yellow left in it, but there's a little bit more of that orange color in there. And we are going to put a little bit more of a tree line back here, so not to worry. It'll, there'll be higher grasses and stuff there. All right, once you, have the, um, once you have your mountains the way you like them, we're gonna take the same brush. I'm gonna get the paint out of my brush and I want to add a little bit more of a small tree line back here. 
and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do it with a more of a bluish green. So I'm gonna come over to my blue, so my ultramarine blue, and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to it at a time. And I'm gonna come over and pick up a little bit of some white. A little more yellow. Just add in a little bit of yellow at a time. Pull down a little bit. And some weight. I want this to be a pale bluish color in the background. Kind of a little bit more turquoisey, maybe. I don't want it too, too warm. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit with the white. So I'm just mix quite a bit of white. I want it to be really soft back here. We're not gonna see a lot of it, but I do want to have a bit A bit of a tree line back here against this. You know, I'm, I'm just tapping the corner of my flat brush. I don't want anything too major back here, but I wanted to get a little bit more of that yellowish sort of um, blue, so that turquoisey blue color back here against my purple. the way that's looking and you want to vary your heights so it doesn't all look like a straight line across maybe some of them are taller some of them are flat you can use a flat part of your brush to make them shorter and we are going to have some tall grasses and stuff so but I do want to have a little bit of that nice turquoisey color back here and you'll see why once we get our little barn in. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my yellow. I'm not rinsing my brush out. I'm going to come down and I'm just going to start to put that little yellow back here. I want it a little bit more earthy than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of my, just a drop of my umber in there. So I'm just picking up a little, a little corner of the burnt umber. There you go. And I want to get the base of where I put the tree line. And I'm just going to put that back in here. A little bit more water on my brush. And when I'm coming over, a little bit more of that yellow in there is getting a little too blue. So I'm going to get a little more burnt umber and pull it into this blue yellow color and just start sweeping that in back here. This is my second layer. Once we get that filled in, we're going to rinse out our quarter inch brush and we're going to go back to our half inch brush. So now we're going to be working with our half inch flat brush and we're going to start to pull up some more grasses in here on both sides and then we'll start to come down into here and do grasses. And what I'm going to do, so I'm going to mix up, I want everything up in the front to be a nice warm green color. So you can do ultramarine blue with your yellow, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull out some of my hooker's green. I'm gonna get it a little wet so it's a little bit more smooth. 
And I'm going to pull in some of my yellow. Because now we're going to start to brighten things, warm things a little more as we're moving forward. And I'm going to come down to my umber. I'm just going to drop in some of my umber. So I just got a little tiny little corner of it. And I'm setting it in there. And I'm just going to mix that up in there. So it creates somewhat of an olive green color. And I'm going to come into this little area and I'm going to put my brush down and I'm just going to start to tap it in the way that I did earlier as far as um, making just little short taps, letting the bristles kind of flatten and pull down, flatten and pull down. I want this to be a grassy sort of hill area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit more of my yellow and a little bit more of my umber. And I'm going to mix that into this mixture. I'm going to add just a little bit of red to it. And I'm just going to start to come in and mix that in as well. And I'm going to go across and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. It's a little grassy area, a little grassy hill. Go ahead and cover that a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of white into it because it's looking a little transparent there so I'm going to come back and get some of my umber, a little red, a little hooker's green, a little bit more green in there, a little bit more umber, a little bit more of the red. There you go. We are going to be using our small brush to get some little flicks of grass in there as well, so not to worry. This is like layer number two for the front part. And as I come more forward, I'm going to start to get a little darker in these front areas. So I'm going to continue to add red which is the opposite of green, and green together, a little yellow, and some of the umber just to take it back. You can even here add a little bit of purple, not too much purple, and it gets it even darker, but it still keeps a nice greenish yellow color to it. And I'm just working just to turn my brush, get all the paint off the brush. And you want to make sure that you work this color in so that it works in towards some of the color that you put down back here so it blends forward in a natural looking way. And just keep everything nice and loose. You don't have to get right in there and start doing any sort of grass things yet. And we'll do a little bit of that. So I'm going to mix up just a little bit more of this color. So a little yellow, poker's green, red, umber. And I added a little bit more umber that time because I'm coming down into this corner over here. And I'm going to have this a little darker. Added a little more green there. And we are going to flick up some of these grasses.
As I come forward, I'm gonna to start to work a little bit more on the edge of the brush, the chiseled edge here. So I'm gonna pick up some of this color and just start working a little bit more so there's some more grasses down here, which we're gonna be putting some of that in, but I want this area to have a little bit more of a grassy feel. And while I have this color on my brush, I'm just gonna come back in here. I'm gonna add some white to it. Some more hooker's green. All right, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse my brush out so the same brush, and I wanna mix up a nice little sandy color to work into my path. So I've got my little orange mix up here, so it's just white and my cadmium orange. I'm gonna add just a touch of the umber to it. I don't want too much, again, it's just a little corner of my brush, and just add it a little bit at the time. And then you can test it out. And that's a little bit too light. I want a little bit more back there. So we're going to go from light to dark, but I want this to be sandy, a sand color. I'm going to add a little touch of my orange because I feel like I lost the orange in there. And then a little bit more of the umber. And you just add small amounts at a time. And you can come in. There we go. And you want to keep, the, the thing here is you want to keep, even though your path is curved, you still want to keep your brush moving straight across your canvas here. And you can even take this into your little grassy area a little bit. And I'm just making little short sweeping strokes. I'm gonna add a drop now as I'm coming forward. I'm gonna add a drop of my purple. Just a little bit at a time. I don't want too much purple in there. A little more orange. And then a little more white. Mixed up in there. And even take a little hint of the yellow as we move forward to warm it. A little more burnt umber there. See what that looks like. I want it to be a little bit more umber in there. There we go. So I'm going to start back a little bit where I left off because I don't want to have it not blend in. So I just started back a little bit and I'm going to start doing the same thing as I move forward. So we just darkened it. little bit less on my brush. I'm going to even sweep a little bit back in the back again. Come back, get a little more on my brush. I'm going to dig my brush in here. I'm going to add a little bit more orange, a little bit more of the purple. As I come forward, I want it even a little bit more on the dark side. Let's see how that looks. A little drop of water in my paint here. Get my brush pressed down into it. And again, I'm still keeping my strokes straight across. I'm not trying to curve them like the path is curved because if you do that, it's gonna look like your path is falling over. It's gonna look not natural. 
And it's always good to have your path bigger than you think because we're going to bring up some grasses and stuff along the edge there. I may even take a little bit of this color and just kind of don't have much of it on my brush. Maybe even just sweep it back here. It's kind of fun to have colors that you have left over on your brush and just sweep them across here or there. Right. Okay, so I'm liking that. I'm going to rinse this brush out and we're going to start working with our small round brush. So for this stage of the painting, we're gonna to start to block in our barn and we're gonna do some rocks in the foreground on this side of the painting and a couple of old trees that have that are now just stumps. And so what I did is I went ahead and, and sketched this in, but I'm gonna go through that with you. So I'm gonna have just a little, little red barn here and have this feeling of coming down the path and maybe curving right around into it. And we're gonna pull up some grasses but for the barn, when you're thinking about the barn, you want to think about the perspective. So you don't want it too big. So I, I made it so that it comes maybe just above my back tree line so that it appears closer to us. And I'm going to make sure that when I do my roof line, so if I want it to be just above the tree line, I'm going to do a little line and it's about maybe an inch and a half long. And I have it slightly angled down so it's slightly angling so if i kept the line drawing it would come at an angle down this way just the way the mountains are doing and then i'm going to make the for the rooftop another line going at an angle down this way that is parallel to it and then i'm going to connect the lines with two parallel lines across from each other and then i'm going to create another partial line for the other angle side of the roof and just pull a line straight down and a line straight down across from it. And then back here, I'm just gonna connect from the top down. And of course, when you're painting, you can adjust it, make it a little wider, a little shorter. And then I'm just gonna have a little opening here and you can do a, an arc, you can keep it straight. That's up to you. It's just gonna be the little opening here then we're just going to have a few rocks in the foreground and all i did to indicate those was just a couple of um maybe some triangles they're going to look a bit more natural when we paint them in and i'm actually going to have a few little rocks along the edge of my pathway and then for my trees i'm doing two split broken trees so i'm just going to come up and have one come up to a point and it's kind of leaning in and the other one, I'm going to do the same thing, but maybe a little taller, coming up to a little broken point. And then we'll have some little um, stray limbs coming out from that. I just want to make sure that I have, um, when I'm painting it in, I have this base a little wider. And then it narrows a little more as you move up to the top of the broken tree. So we're going to be working with our round brush. And I'm gonna get it a little wet in my water. And I wanna mix up a, a reddish color, but I want it to start out a little darker red. So I'm gonna take my alizarin crimson and I'm gonna pull some of that over. Go ahead and pick up a little bit of my white. I'll come down here, just a little bit of white. I'm gonna add a touch of my orange. So I'm gonna come in and just get a little dot of orange on my tip of my brush and I'm going to put that in and mix it in a little more red to it and to make it a little darker I'm going to come down and I'm going to pick up a little bit of my green just a little drop of green I don't want too much because I don't want to muddy it. I just want to take the color back. You could also use a little bit of umber. So I have my little green in there. And I'm going to roll my brush around to get all that paint off. A little more red. There we go. And let's test that out. And I'm going to start making my lines come down because I want this barn to have a nice, and I'm going to go right into my grasses here. I want it to have a nice 
would feel. So I'm just going to stroke down and I'm going to get a little bit more water in my paint. And I wanted to draw in across first there and then stroke down. And you can certainly, if you have trouble with lines and you wanted to, to use a, a square brush, you could do that. A small, flat, square brush. And then I'm going to add a little bit of my titanium white over here. I'm going to come down and pick up a little bit of my purple. And I'm going to come in and make my roof a more of a purpley color. And again, we're going to be putting, this is just our first layer of our barn. back and fill in this little front area with the darker color for the barn. And I'm going to leave my chalk lines there for now. And when the paint dries, I'm going to wipe those off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my purple and I'm going to pull in some green and some umber. And I just didn't rinse my brush off. I just left what was in there. And I'm going to go ahead and start filling in these little trees so I can just create the shape of my trees. And you can go back to your flat brush if you want to. I'm just going to get them kind of sketched in and we'll go back and get our and get back to our flat brush later on. I just want to know where they are for now. This one I'm going to have leaning a little bit. And I'm just going to go ahead and just put in a little bit of color down here so I know where my rocks are, maybe down in here, just having a few little rocks coming in. I want kind of a bigger one maybe there, just a little rocky area. And we're going to have some grasses still growing around these rock, rocky areas. It's kind of almost like doing the mountains and we'll shape them up as we go. And then I'm going to have a few bigger rocks on this side, maybe even a few small ones back here, and a few bigger ones on this side. And then I want this to be a little bit random, so I don't want to have straight lines now that I'm actually painting it in. And that goes for both of these. And again, if you want to use your larger brush for this, you certainly may. We're going to go back with the flat brush in just a little bit. Oh, area here, maybe there's another one sitting beside that one. And there's going to be grasses and highlights on these, so I'm going to come back and get all of that done, not to worry. 
looks like a mess right now. While I have this dark color here, I'm going to go ahead and fill this little area in here just to have a nice dark looking area. And I'm using that burnt, that same um, umber and purple, the burnt and the umber and the purple, and I'm just filling that in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse my brush out, get that paint on our brush, and we're going to start working with defining the grasses in the foreground. So when you're thinking about your composition, you want to think about leading your viewer around your painting. So I have rocks here. The viewer may come across and their eye will stop on the trees or the broken trees. And then it'll come back to my barn and it'll maybe even hit back here. We may have a little something back here, maybe a little fence line, we'll see. And then we'll come back around. If not, the viewer's eye will stop on the mountain range. So even here, it, the viewer can keep going up to the mountain range. So it's a triangle. So the reason I'm holding on to the small round brush is because now we're going to work on our grassy areas and we still want that same idea of guiding our viewer around. So I'm going to use some brighter greenish yellow colors for the top of the hill here and going across to here. And then we'll work on maybe brightening the path up as well in just a little bit. But right now I'm just focused on the grasses. And then as we move forward, the grasses will be darker as we, as we come forward and even more dark as we come down into here. And the thing to look for are pockets of things that you may like. So you've got just broken brush strokes here. If you like some of the areas, like I really like this little dark area here, so I may settle in some greens around it, but keep some of that. I like this bright area in here, but I'm gonna brighten it up even more. So just look for areas where you may want to keep now and other areas where you're thinking, oh, there's not enough paint or it looks too squared off here. So you always want to look for opportunities while you're painting. So I'm going to mix up, I'm going to come down into this little area here and I just picked up a little water and I want to make a nice fresh green. So I'm going to mix up some yellow in my ultramarine blue, but if you wanted to use the hooker's green and add some yellow to that and use a white, you can do that as well. Just wanted more of a, a brighter green. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my white. A little bit more yellow because I want this area back here to be a little bit more yellow green. And I'm just rolling my brush to get the paint out of it. And then of course that saturates the bristles of the brush. And let's see what that looks like. So that's a nice bright green. And I'm gonna hit a little bit more I'm going to leave that. I'm going to bring some yellow up above just to get even more bright. There we go, like that. And I'm just going to start to make up and down strokes to create some grass. And if you want to, you could always get a nice bristle brush and scrub some paint on and pull it that way. But I just want some individual grasses in this phase of my painting. Maybe some of them are higher, some of them are lower. And I'm gonna use the same bright yellow color and I'm just gonna come up and work down my hill with this bright yellow color. And when you're working on your own, you've got your little space set up, you can start to practice and do what works for you. So there's some things that I do that you may find that you don't like as well, and that's okay. It's always nice to experiment and figure out what it is that you're liking, what it is that you, you may find is not to your artistic like, liking. And I'm just still working with that little yellow color, the yellow green back here. And I'm gonna go ahead, and although we may not see a lot of, or focus on a lot of this, we're gonna go ahead and put those grasses, because I do want this to feel like it's just nice 
loose grasses back here. And again, I'm just push, I'm just pushing my brush down, creating just blades of grass, individual blades of grass. I'll add a little bit of white to that, bring some more yellow in. Yellow is quite transparent, and I'm going to mix in some of this blue green color that I made. And just keep working some of that in because that brightens it up a little bit over here by the barn, even more. Maybe put a little bit of that closer in toward my barn. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and add my blue again, just the ultramarine blue. And I'm going to come in and do a touch of, you could do either orange or burnt umber to get this a little bit more dark. I can even add a little orange just to make it shine a little bit. And I'm just going to start to move forward with a little bit more of a green, darker green. And you wanna make sure that you hit some of these greens into the lighter area that you just created. And I really like that little dark area there, so I'm gonna leave that. Now, as I start to come more forward, I'm gonna to start to bring in some of my hooker's green and a little bit more of my blue. And I still have some burnt umber in there. You can even get a drop of purple. And red is opposite on the color wheel. If you wanna throw some red in there, you can. We're just trying to make it even more bold as we come forward with the pigment. that little area there maybe put some grasses in, in it a little bit but not too much And I'm going to go ahead and start pulling in some grasses around in this area where my rocks are. And we can start to decide where we want to add some highlights to our rocks in just a little bit. pull up some grasses around my trees. And we're gonna have some little, we're gonna have some little stick areas poking out of the tree as well, so not to worry. I'm just gonna go ahead and make little short strokes here and bring it in my path a little bit. Mix 
mix in a few of these lighter grasses here, just a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna come down over here. And we are not, we're not done with the front part of the painting as far as grasses go. We're gonna add with our bigger brush some more grasses in the front area as well. Gonna throw a little few of these little lighter grasses just a little bit scattered in this dark area. Alright, I don't see if this is dry. Alright, so I'm just gonna take a little paper towel get some of this chalk off and we'll come back and get it all off after it's completely dry later on. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting my Morning. So I want to get this dark color, um, the color we were just working with, out of my brush. Okay, so we're going to brighten up the barn a little bit. So I'm going to add a layer of a brighter red. So I'm going to take my alizarin crimson. And I'm going to get a little bit of my white. A hint of the orange. I don't want too much orange this time. And I'm going to come down and get just a drop of my purple. A little more red. So it's mostly red, a little purple, a touch of orange, and a little white. And let's see what that looks like. I want it to be a little bit more red, I think. It's always good to test it, see what it looks like. I'm adding a little more alizarin to it. There we go. I just wanted it to be a little more red than that. And we are gonna go in and put a little white into that, just to give it a nice aged look. And I'm just going to bring it down. And I do want those grasses to stay up around my barn. And I can go ahead and fill in where my gaps were with my drawing. And we will distinguish between where the roof is here on this side as we go along and put our highlights on. And if you've noticed, I did my light source mainly coming from this side because it's casting all the shadows on this side of the mountain. And we'll be able to see that when we finish the trees as well but you're not gonna to see too much difference between this color and this color. There may be a little difference, but the light is coming from this side. So there may be a shadow cast, um, or there may be a more of a shadow on this side slightly, and maybe a little bit of sun hitting on the back side here, but there's not gonna be a whole lot of difference in the barn color from, from the front to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. going to do is I'm going to come I'm not going to rinse my brush out pick up a little bit more white I'm bringing it over to this area where I was working earlier I'm going to add a little purple and I'm going to add a little bit of orange to dull the purple let's see what that looks like there we go. So now I'm going to get my roof on. Go ahead and 
follow that roof line and just bring that down. And then you can have some of that base layer showing through. Give it that nice aged look. And we're gonna go back in and do our little highlights on everything. So not to worry. And then I'm going to go back into my purple and burnt umber mixture. Go ahead and make this even more filled in now. It's a little purple, a little burnt umber. There we go. We'll work on that a little bit more when that dries. All right, so now we're going to rinse out our small round brush. And we're gonna go on to the next level of getting some highlights on all of our foreground rocks and trees. So now I have a, my small flat brush and I'm gonna get back to a color that's very similar to this bright color. But before I do that, I wanna go ahead and, and, and um, darken this side of each of these trees and maybe fill in a little bit more of the rock. So I'm gonna dip into my purple and my umber, and this is quite dark. And I'm gonna add a touch of orange, a little bit more orange than that. And then I'm gonna come on this side and decide now exactly how I want my tree to be. So I'm just gonna pull in some of the color and come straight down. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this tree, just decide now what shape I really want. And I'm going on the, what would be the dark side of the tree. And create a nice squared off edge, there we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same color and I'm gonna pull in a little bit of my white. Go right above that color. Pull it in. I'm kind of looking for a medium color now, so I'm just mixing some white into my purple and burnt umber to create more of a medium brownish purple color. Let's see what that looks like. It's a little too purple. I want a little bit more in my umber. All right, so I'm gonna just be on the very chiseled edge of my brush and I'm gonna come down on this side of the tree. And I'm gonna take my finger down the middle where those two meet and you can do little circles with your finger just to blend it in. Here we go. So you have a purplish brown color on this side and more of the brown on the darker side. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this tree. And I'm just on the chisel edge, which is the very top edge of my brush. And then I'm just going to take my finger and come down and make little circles with my finger to blend that in. Fill that in just a little more. All right, and I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna come back to my light, lighter purple color, and I'm just gonna come down and just start to this isn't the final highlight color but I'm gonna to start to decide where I want my rocks to be now, what they're gonna look like. 
just like I did with my mountains earlier. I'm gonna be blending, I'm gonna be putting down some color and just blending at the base of that color with my finger. You certainly could use a separate brush, have a separate brush in hand and work with it that way. So I'm coming along the top edge and I'm just pulling out some of this color, this purpley color down, creating some areas of dark and light. And this, again, we're gonna be adding some more highlights to this as we go. And I'm going to come into my burnt umber purple, the darker colors. I'm just going to come in and just fill in some of these areas. Make them a little more solid. And if there's areas that you put in that you don't like, you certainly can, this is your chance to change it. And again, this isn't the final bit that we're going to be doing to the rocks. That look a little more solid. setting those rocks in the grass. That's why I didn't put the grasses down there yet. All right, let's see if this is dry. It's almost dry. This is dry. I'm gonna give this just a few more minutes to dry with the rocks and the um, barn. And then we'll come back and we'll finish up our final little highlighting of everything to pull the painting together. So now we're gonna to start to add some highlights to our rocks and our trees and get our barn highlighted. So I'm gonna mix up a nice light peach color. And then we've got our peach back here in our mountain. So this is gonna pull some of this orangish peach color in. So I've mixed up mostly white with a touch of orange and I'm gonna actually add just a drop of my umber to it. And this is gonna be a dry brush technique. So you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. So I'm gonna wipe the paint out. And I want my brush mostly dry. And I wanna get a nice edge on my brush when I'm doing this. So this little chiseled edge here. And I'm gonna come into my paint. And I'm just gonna get some, um, just the little tips of my brush on both sides. And I'm gonna make my little dot along here where I know there's the rooftop and I'm not making a straight line. I'm just dotting it in. And then I'm just gonna start to pull down, just skimming, it's a very light touch. So very little paint on my brush and I'm just pulling down. So I ran out of paint on that side. So now I'm gonna do the same thing here. And so it gives it a nice aged look. If you wanna blend your finger, blend with your finger you can. And you've got some of that reddish barn showing through, but you can tell it's an, it's an old weathered barn. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come back in, pick up some of this peachy color, and I'm just gonna come do the same thing on the front side. And I may have to turn a little bit on the chisel edge here and just go down a little bit more on the edge of the brush in those small areas. And we'll come back here. And we're just looking to get a nice weathery look. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Very 
top. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm not gonna get this paint off my brush because there's not a lot on it. But I'm gonna dip, dip straight into my white and I wanna try to make sure I have a nice chiseled edge. Again, I need a clean spot on my palette. So I'm gonna push down just to get a nice little edge there. And I'm gonna go along the roof line here and dot with the white. All right, I'm liking that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more purple, just a little drop of purple to this orange color, this peachy color. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of the umber, just a drop of the umber. And my paint's getting a little dry, so I'm gonna put just a drop of water in there, mix that around. And I'm gonna start to do the same thing, it's just that light, dry brush technique on the rooftop. And you want, if you want, you can blend with your finger. Then I'm gonna dip just into my burnt umber, bring it up here to that purple color so it's a little dark now. And I'm just gonna dot along underneath where the roof line would be there. Blend that in and blend that in. Maybe even a little bit under the front side. I want that to be a little darker. So I'm gonna do my burnt umber and purple together. I just want that to be a little darker and add a little bit of that red to it. Just feel like that's just too light. There we go. I wanna create a little shadow underneath my roof line there. So I added some alizarin and some purple with a little bit of that burnt umber. I'm just gonna dot that down where I think the turn in my barn would be. So there we go, I like that a little better. And then I'm gonna take that purple color, add some white to it, and I'm just gonna drop a little bit in there and just with my finger so it's in that little inside area, just so you can get a little variation of color. You don't know what's going on in there. You don't want it just one color though. I'm just gonna blend that around with my fingers. There we go. And a lot of times these old barns would have like a little loft up here, a little loft window. So I'm gonna keep the dark color that I have while I have that on my brush. And I'm just gonna do just one little sweep, press and pull. There we go. I'm gonna make it a little darker. There we go. So now it looks like maybe there's a, a loft at the top of the barn there. I'm gonna get this paint out of my brush. All right, and we'll come back and we'll put a little color in that little window and in there in just a minute. So we're gonna start to mix up a little light orange yellowy color, just like we were in the mountains back here. And we're gonna start to throw that around in our painting, especially to highlight our trees. So I'm gonna come into my white I'm gonna pull it up here. I'm gonna add a little yellow. So I can find some clean yellow there. And a little orange. So that sunshiny light color that we've been using back on to highlight the mountains. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my tree over here, these broken up trees. And I'm just gonna start to put my chisel edge down and sweep that in. I want it to be a little bit more orange than that. I'm 
There we go. And then I'm just going to blend that in. And go back into that little purple color. So I'm going to mix up my burnt umber and my purple. And then just leave that in here. And I'm just going to start to make maybe some little jagged edges on my tree with the purple and that burnt umber color. And down here, it's still gonna be a little darker. I'm just gonna blend that with my fingers. And I want it to be dark down here, so I don't wanna to get too far with my highlighting so I can add a little bit of that lighter purple color. So you can see there may be a little bit of light coming through and hitting through here because our light source is on this side. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take the, that little bit of purple I mixed into that orange color just so it's not too, too. I'm just gonna pull in and then blend. Pull in. I don't want my color to be too, too bright. So I added a little purple in and I'm just gonna blend in. And we might have some little jagged areas where the sun might hit on that tree. Like that. Maybe like that. The same here, we might have like a little bit more of a jagged end. This is where you can just put like a little bit of highlight and it just makes all the difference of what that tree actually looks like. I'm gonna bring it into a little curve there. You can bring this into a little curve. There we go. Put a little highlight there. And those little jagged edges. This old broken tree. On the edge and pull in. I'm going to go back into my purple, lighter purple color and just maybe sweep some of that lighter purple color across. There you go. And while I have that same little lighter purple color, I'm going to turn my brush and pull in on this window just a little bit to give that a little highlight and then at the top. So it adds a little bit of maybe some light coming through and I may even hit it a little bit here because the light might be just hitting inside the barn a little bit. And so now we're going to add highlights to our rocks. So I'm going to come over here and just put down some paint and then pull down just like we did back on the mountains, just to create some nice rock formations that are coming along in here. Maybe even back in here a little bit. And you can have fun with that. And then over here, I'm gonna do, and this is where just like little brush strokes of highlight make a lot of difference. You just, it doesn't take much to get a little highlight going. Pull it down, and pull it down. Down. And I'm just putting it down and just blending it with my finger. We're going to settle these rocks into the grass in just a little bit. And I'm going to come down into this lighter purple color. I didn't even take anything out of my brush. And I can come down and maybe. It through with just a medium purple color just to give it a little bit more character a little more oomph some areas are lighter some are darker you always want to take a moment to step back and see what you have going on I want to take some of this purple out of my brush all right, so I want kind of a toned down orange. So 
I've got a little orange here with a little purple. I'm going to add a little blue. See what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to come up and I'm just going to do a little hits of this orangish color here and there, maybe a little bit back here, and I'm just going to blend it around. I don't want a lot of it. But I do want to slide some across the path here, back in there, right across from my barn. And I'm going to work it up to my rocks just to settle those rocks in a little bit. Maybe into here with some of these grasses. We're pulling up more grasses in just a minute just to get some taller grasses in, but I'm going to pull some of this sandy road in here. take some of this and hit it back here just a little bit maybe giving an indication that our path may curve around a little bit here and off into the distance and this is even brighter so I may add a little bit of it to the front here on top of these rocks. This is a nice way to pull your painting together. Just find a nice bright color and drop it in, but not too much, just a little bit. So I think instead of putting a fence, I was gonna put a fence back there. I'm just mixing up a little green and just bringing that in, maybe stroking in some, just some nice pasture looking green color back here. I like that better. Make sure it come back in here. And my path is just kind of disappearing back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that off. So I like that better. I don't think I really want a fence in there. It just looks like rolling hills and I like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix in um, my green and go ahead and start pulling up some of my darker greens down here. So I'm still going to be using my small flat brush and I'm going to get my paint pretty wet and I'm going to do my hookers green. I'm going to pull in some yellow and I'm going to go ahead and get a little tiny touch of purple. Just kind of get all that mixed in. I want this to be um, quite green. Let's see how dark that looks. A little darker than that. So I'm going to add a little red to get it a little darker. just want this to be a nice dark green so I'm going to add a little more hookers to that. There we go. So I'm going to load up my brush and I'm flattening my brush and my paint so I can get a nice chiseled edge and I'm turning on that chiseled edge and I'm just going to start to flick up some grasses so that I can settle in my rocks here and some of them are going to be taller than the rock itself. That's great and they can go in all different directions. I'm going to lift this and hold it so you, you can get down in the base of the painting here. And you can see that I'm just flicking up some areas, settling in the rock. And I'm going to flatten it out down at the very bottom so I make sure I get rid of that white line down at the base of my painting. Get a little more paint, flatten my brush into the paint, and just flick up some more grasses. And if you find that your paint is not rolling off your brush, you just need to add a little bit more moisture to your brush. In this case, you can add some to your, to your um, paint as well. And this is gonna stay on the chisel edge to get some of these taller grasses. 
actually going to bring some of them all the way down into here. And you can see where you, if you have areas that are that seem to be straight lines, you can pull some of these little grasses up here. You can even flatten your brush now that you have this brush and create some little pockets of flatter areas too, if you want to, like pressing down so those little pockets. I don't want to lose that little dark area. I really like that area there. And I like having the light in there. So look for areas that you like. Try not to cover anything up that you really like. And we'll settle that in. And I want it to be a little darker. I'm going to add a drop of purple to my green here. See if I can get settled down in here. Just a little, a few little areas that are a little darker down in the base here. Just a little bit. Don't make them all look the same like that. There we go. Okay, I'm liking that. And the other thing we need to do as well, see if we can flick some more grasses up over here. Do a little more water. So we settle the tree in. I'm going, to pour, I'm going to flatten my brush a little bit and we're going to just turn it a little more flat to get some of these grasses here and we'll go back in and get a little sand around that again. There we go. I'm going to lighten that with some yellow. So I'm just putting some yellow in that mixture and I'm just going to flick up a few little light ones. Come back in here, back here with my yellow again getting around my barn. Maybe do a few little black grasses back here. And I'm gonna come back into, I wanna get this out of my brush. Come back into my orange and white. And I had some of that greenish purple color on my brush. I'm just going to try to settle in some areas around in here. And just blend that in a little bit. Maybe kind of put the this brighter yellow orange color up around my rocks. Maybe the wind has blown. We're in rough terrain so the wind may have blown some of those dirt patches up around my rocks here. Maybe even up around in this area a little bit, add a little bit of that highlight color. And even probably drop some of that on the top of my sunlit rocks. So you can see as you're working, add in a few highlights here and there is really can make all the difference in the world. A little bit of the orange in there. All right, I'm actually going to sweep a little bit of that color up here because it doesn't like it's got enough wear and tear up here on this top part of the barn. And so you can put that where you feel like you may see some sand just around these little grasses. Now what I want to do is I just want to do a few twig sort of things. So I'm going to leave this orange in my brush because that's going to work well with my purple and my umber. And we're just going to start to see if we can get on the chisel edge again of our brush and maybe pull up a few little twig like things around our tree. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that so it can be seen a little better. So purple, burnt umber, a little orange. Maybe a few little twigs poking up around there. I made it a little bit more brown. 
may even have like a little twig poking out of our tree there. There's a few little growth pieces coming out of there. Blend it on down. Okay, so we're going to do a little yellow highlight um, back in the back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my small round brush with some white and yellow with a hint of green. And I'm just going to start to pull up a little bit more of the yellow and just rub that in. Pull it a little higher up through here. And then I'm going to hit a little bit of that at an angle back through here. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a little slope back here. It's just a little bit to add some sunlight hitting through the background. And that's where my little path is disappearing back there that you can barely see. I'm coming in back through here to lead our eye to our little barn. There we go. And I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow and white and pop it along in here. And then we are going to take this little brush and figure out where we want to sign it. So you can continue to add whatever you'd like to your painting. If you wanted to put a little fence back here, you could. If you wanted to add a little bit more yellow highlight back here, you could. Um, if you wanted to put some little tiny animals back there, if you wanted to add a little bit more highlight on your barn, you could do that as well. So you, you can decide what else you may want to do with yours, but I'm going to go ahead and lift this up and I am going to sign it. And there we go. Thank you for taking the time to paint with me today. I hope you had fun and created something really special for yourself. Until next time, bye-bye.